you're going to see problems where the pulley systems get more complicated. So let's look at this basic use of a pulley. Um, I've told you one thing you can do with it is use it to change the direction of a tension force. But you can also get interesting when you double up a pulley on an object. So the simple question here is what minimum pull force do we need to a person to apply to the end of the rope to lift or you could say hold this mass in the air? That's a kind of a, a, a limiting or a minimum case again, kind of like other problems. What, what is needed? So basically that means when we say the sum of the forces on this object, we're going to say set it equal to zero. Or when does it become just big enough to be larger than zero? Because if the sum of the forces is zero, that's what it takes to hold it in the air without the assistance of a normal force. Okay, so that's why I said to hold or lift. Since it's the minimum, you could say you got to have that plus any extra that you apply will accelerate it up. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way first. And now let's start thinking about the forces. So you're going to pull with your hand here. That's going to create a tension in the rope. And if these are the ideal pulleys that they always are in this class, and that's a tension T, that's a tension T, and that's a tension T. The whole thing is a tension T. Okay, so let's do free body diagram with the pulley. Here we go. Let's uh, draw it here. Big MG down, and uh, I'm sorry, the pulley. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Let's we'll say this is the pulley and not the mass. Or it's the pulley and the mass together. This is one solid object. So MG pulls it down. If you think of it as the mass and the pulley, then uh, that's just MG applied directly. If you think of this as just the pulley, it's then just the action-reaction pair of the mass and the pulley and the pulley on the mass. Think of it as the mass and the pulley. What's pulling it up? is the rope's tension, but it's being applied twice because there's two ropes. So this is a way to double the tension force on something, is to have it come down once and come down again. So sometimes people are wondering what exactly is going on. So think of the tension as applying a force really to the pulley, the pulley structure, at the angle at which it comes off. Okay. So this is pulling up with tension T, and this is pulling up with tension T. When you think about this pulley, it's being pulled down with tension T and off to the side with tension T. But that's just how hard this thing is pulling on the ceiling, which we don't care about. The thing we care about is this mass, and it's being pulled up with two tension forces. So we think of the mass then, the sum of the forces, and the Y equals, we're going to say zero. We want to know what does it take to hold it in the air, because that's the minimum of then what it takes to, to lift it. So it's just 2T minus Mg. Okay, so um, you can solve that and say that then the tension that you need is one half of mg, one half of the weight, or one half, yeah, one half of the weight of the box. And then we can actually do this. This is kind of like the monkey problem, if you've seen it, is you can think, what's really happening at the end of this rope? There's the rope, and there's the hand. Well, the hand is pulling on the end of the rope, uh, and the end of the rope is pulling on the hand. Well, I've drawn these backwards if you want to think of this action reaction. So the hand is pulling on a rope, and the rope is pulling on the hand with tension T. They're equal and opposite. Your hand is the pull force of your hand is directly equal to the tension force on the rope, because those are an action reaction pair, two things interacting. So then really what force F pull is needed is equal to this. It takes half the weight. So that's what this setup does is it makes it easier to lift the mass. Instead of having to pick up the entire weight, you set up something like this and you have to pull with half the weight. Okay, but you can never win. Right? You always lose in physics. So you might think, well, let's put 10 pulleys. I could lift anything. But let's also think about in these problems, how much distance do you lift it? So let's say you brought this arm around, grabbed right here, and pulled this a distance D. D of the rope. How much is the mass going to move? Well, that pull took up D of the rope, so that means the rope has to get D shorter. It'll do so by lifting the mass because it's attached here. It's got a finite length here. So if we're going to take a total distance D, and it's done by moving this up, you lose half D here, and you lose half of D here. So the point is, if you use the doubly connected uh, rope over a pulley to make 
make it easier to list something, you don't lift it as far. Right? So if you pull a distance d, m is up a half d. What if the question is, what if you pull at velocity v? Well, since the d is a half, then just take a derivative, it's the same thing. Mass will go up and a half v. And what if we accelerate the end of the rope at a? The mass will move up and a half a. So this kind of a pulley setup is something to reduce the amount of force, but it also slows down the kinematic.